Jade Goody's cancer has spread. She was diagnosed with cervical cancer in August last year. If they can detect it early, that's what you want to be done. You don't want to put it off and wait till you're in a situation because now we live in the unknown. Very little cancers that we have a vaccine for. This is the only one I can think of right now. No woman should die from cervical cancer. We have all the tools to eliminate it. Yet the burden of cervical cancer falls on the women who lack access to health services. You see, research has shown that 90% of cervical cancers occur in low income and middle income countries that lack organized screening and vaccination programs. You see, in the year 2020 worldwide, we saw around 604,000 new cases and 342,000 deaths from cervical cancer. Cervical cancer can develop in any part of the cervix, which is the opening between the vagina and the womb. We sometimes refer to the cervix as the neck of the womb. The main cause of cervical cancer is the human papilloma virus also known as HPV. Now there are lots of subtypes of HPV, but there are particularly two subtypes, HPV 16 and HPV 18, that are linked to the vast majority of cervical cancer cases. You see, getting vaccinated against HPV is a really good way to prevent cervical cancer, topping about nine out of 10 cases involving the most serious HPV subtypes. So why am I making this video today? While well, research on cervical cancer symptom awareness is quite concerning, with 75% of women being unable to recall any symptoms of cervical cancer. So I really want to bridge this gap in knowledge. If you experience any of the following symptoms, it's really important to see a doctor. Firstly, if you are experiencing any postmenopausal bleeding, this is bleeding after menopause. This could be due to cervical cancer, but also may be caused by other things, including cancer of the womb, which is why it's important that you get seen by a health professional. Secondly, please get seen if you have persistent, unexplained abnormal vaginal bleeding, such as bleeding after your periods or after sexual intercourse, that isn't caused by an infection or another underlying condition that you've already been diagnosed with. Next up on our list is any persistent vaginal discharge that's not due to an infection or other typical causes, particularly if this is bloodstained. Cervical cancer can be cured if it's diagnosed at an early stage and treated promptly. As well as being aware of the symptoms in order to catch things early, it's also super important that you attend for regular cervical cancer screening appointments. Screening tests for the presence of HPV. And we know that high risk HPV can cause the cells of your cervix to become abnormal, which can then lead to cancer. The NHS Cervical Screening Program invites women from age 25 to 64 for cervical screening. And you get an invite every three to five years depending on where you live and your age. So what next after you book your cervical screening appointment? Well, some women may feel embarrassed, but it's really key to remember here that this is a routine procedure for your health professional that they do day in and day out. You can request a female doctor and ask for a chaperone. This is another trained staff member to be present if that will make you feel more comfortable. A friend or family member can also accompany you if that makes you feel more comfortable. You should feel in control throughout the process and can voice any discomfort. Moving on to the examination itself, you'll undress from the waist down behind a curtain and be given a sheet for coverage and for privacy. The health professional conducting the examination will wear gloves, examine the external vulva, and then feel inside the vagina for any abnormalities. Following this, a speculum, which is a smooth tube-shaped tool, is gently inserted into the vagina to view the cervix. A small sample of cells from the cervix may then be taken using a soft brush. This shouldn't be painful, but in some cases might be a bit uncomfortable. Information is key when it comes to reducing our overall risk of cancer. This is why I've created other videos such as this one here, which I think you'll benefit from. As always, please leave a like and subscribe if you found today's video helpful. And remember, I truly care about your health and I wish you the very best.